Minister of Information laments inadequate funding of the ministry as reps liken information management to security. Nigerian Armed Forces on high alert to neutralize threats to security, says Minister of Defense. And payback time, reps decline consideration of foreign affairs budget proposal. Always a pleasure to have you join us on You and Your Reps. I am Victor as a welcome. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has described as grossly inadequate the budgetary provision for the ministry, considering their normal task before it. Now, this was at the budget defense session of the House of Representatives, where he solicited improved funding to enable the ministry perform optimally. The year 2023 holds a special place in history for Nigeria with the general elections and population census. These activities, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says, require all the support for adequate information dissemination to get all citizens on board. But Mr. Chairman, what has happened to me did not spare my parastatus either. The NTA would had 1.9 seven billion capital project last year. Mr. Chairman, this year they have only 457 million. Success of Ministry of Information is determined by their own various successes. He describes as urgent the assignment of tackling the rising wave of fake news, disinformation and misinformation, as well as hate speech and propaganda, which threaten the peace and stability of the nation. We're forgetting the fact that uh, our contribution, deeply understanding between the government and the government, ensuring that disinformation is tackled every day, cannot be quantified. I, I, Mr. Chairman, so only last week, the United States of America issued a security alert unverified and we all know how we have to battle to save not just the stability and unity but even our economy from it. We want the nation to see the information as one of the security agencies that are supposed to be funding the way they fund the security agencies because information is power. For the NCA which proposed 2023 capital expenditure is down by 73% from the previous figure of 2022. The Director General Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembos says it is time to redouble efforts at internally generated revenue. Well, in fact, if we can uh, generate much more than that, we'll be, we'll be very happy to do that. And we are putting all machineries in motion. Okay. to make sure that we achieve that soon. Over how many years now, you've been planning to move to your new site, is it? This small amount here, will it be enough for you to complete the new site? <laughs> it is highly inadequate. But uh, just like the chairman did mention that we should redouble our efforts to see how we can improve on our ad year, because we have already gone far on that project. And I, I want to believe that by the time you come for your oversight, you will appreciate what is on ground. The committee is expected to verify the state of the NCA permanent site during an oversight visit. Nigerian armed forces are on high alert to neutralize any threat to security in the nation's capital and in contiguous states. Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi said this while responding to lawmakers in relation to the recent security advisory issued by the U.S. Now, this was during the presentation of the ministry's 2023 budget before the House Committee on Defense. Bringing such information to public domain, the minister says, has some implications. This, he added, was why the National Security Council mandated the Foreign Affairs Ministry to interact with the U.S. Embassy on the matter. There is no smoke without fire. And in that regard, we were able to subject the details to our intelligence uh, organizations, and they have provided answers to those areas which the government is in doubt. Turning to the 2023 budget proposal of the Defense Ministry, Bashir Magashi said it was targeted at actualizing the ministry's core mandate. Personal cost, 15 billion. Overhead cost, 2.2 billion. Capital expenditure, ministry's headquarters, 4.6 billion. The House Committee on Defense is delighted with the successes recorded so far. 
especially in the last five months. We acknowledge this robust achievement, which is a proof of the level of professionalism often displayed by our military in the discharge of their duties. The Chief of Army Staff, at his engagement with the House Committee on Army, enumerated the benefits of providing a trust fund for the armed forces, which he says will address some of the challenges of the envelope system. Facilitate the passage of the Armed Forces of Nigeria Trust Fund Bill before the end of this assembly. The Nigerian Army will benefit from the passage of the bill through improved funding. The 2023 budget now under consideration is about 600 billion. We know that funding is hardly enough, and this allocation remains a far cry from the operational and personal needs of the Army. But we all judicious application of the provision where we continue to work as a committee to look into ways of enlarging the figures. The budget defense session between the House Committee on Commerce and Minister of Trade and Investment dwells on how Nigeria can tap into the vast export markets. To expand market access, stimulate investment, and encourage patronage of made in Nigeria products. See, that should be something that engenders uh, some kind of uh, hope that at least we are moving forward. The minister stated that the introduction of the ease of doing business policy has improved the investment environment in Nigeria. The House of Representatives Committee on Foreign Affairs says it will not consider the 2023 appropriations of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs until the ministry and its missions comply with resolutions of the House. Chairman of the committee, Yusuf Buba Yakub, stated this when Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama appeared before it to defend the 2023 appropriations. Issues of alleged infractions by submissions under the Ministry of Ashadu Decision, thus forcing the committee to suspend the consideration of the 2023 appropriations for the ministry. I would like to um, beg uh, Mr. Chairman that uh, uh, contrary to your assertions that the ministry is in no way trying to flout uh, the laws uh, of the land and to appropriate to itself uh, any powers that, uh, that it doesn't have. And, um, and we have here evidence of directives that we have given to the various commissions. The problem we have with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are three issues, three areas where they have not adhered to the law and deliberately they have refused to obey the law in those three areas. Before now, our embassies need to apply for approval uh, from the ministry before they can spend their capital uh, expenditure. And uh, this has brought a lot of problem in terms of creating unnecessary bottlenecks where you have an embassy having monies for like four or five years in his coffers and they cannot spend. And uh, you will find all the embassy buildings are dilapidated. They don't have cars. Sometimes you will find an ambassador driving uh, an of his official or staff car with the flag of Nigeria flying and the car breaks down. These things all happen. We have experienced situations where properties of and ambassadors are thrown out of his house because rents are not paid. Even as I speak to you, uh, there are ambassadors that uh, their houses are leaking. Uh, rain is pouring into their houses. They have to put buckets to trap the water. And they have money in their capital, uh, uh, in their capital accounts. So, the, in the wisdom of the National Assembly, in 2022 appropriation, uh, we sponsored a new law, an appropriation uh, law, uh, that says the uh, embassies can do their tenders board and uh, spend some of this money within a threshold that is equ uh, equivalent to other uh, uh, boards and parastatas so that they don't need to come to Nigeria when your roof is blown off or your fence falls off. You have to come to Nigeria. The ministry will have to send two, three staff to go and see what have happened and you pay it air ticket 
uh, you give them accommodation, you pay Esther code, and when they go, they see it, they come back, and for two, three, four years, the approval will not be given. Sometimes the ambassador will finish his tenure in a dilapidated building. Sometimes they, they take their monies to go and rent another house so that they will survive. We have such cases we have seen during our oversight, and then this law was put in place, and Mr. President graciously assented to the law. But the ministry refused to obey that law for the past one year now. We have, uh, we have uh, written letters like four times to the ministry. That is, uh, these are some of the letters we have written in, uh, on the 18th of, of January. I wrote this letter to the ministry and there was no reply. The letter is just to remind them, please, there is now a new law. Allow the embassies to expand their, their, their capital so that our dilapidated embassies will be put in place. And then on the 19th, I wrote another one, and there is no reply. Instead, the, uh, the ministry wrote a letter on the 20th telling the embassies not to uh, obey that law. But any, any of their staff in the embassy that obeys that law will be punished. And they wrote another, the speaker invited them to say, why are you not adhering to the appropriation law, section 10 of the Appropriation Act? The minister said, no, he didn't know that such uh, talaks were sent. And then we showed him the letters. And yet, they went back from that date they did not uh, adhere to that, to that law. And uh, they wrote another letter warning the embassies not to. And on, on the 23rd of September, I wrote another reminder for 23rd September. Two reminders. One, to remind them that uh, they, you are not adhering to this law. You have been threatening the embassies not to adhere to the law. And secondly, uh, there is also another area where, because of lack of approvals to use these funds and so on, monies have been in the accounts for like four, five, six, seven years in some cases. And you know it is against the Constitution. After every, every physical year, monies are supposed to be returned back to the Federation account. And uh, where these monies are not returned for some uh, special reasons, then that agency must write to the National Assembly for waiver. We have all to remind them to seek for such waivers so that the monies that will be spent in the embassies will be legally spent. They also refuse to respond to that. And uh, that is why we will not pass the 2023 budget of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs until they are hired to this rules, which are very simple, except if they want to prove that they are bigger than the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Recall is commonly used as an alternative word for remember, but of course it is its legislative definition that we are concerned with here. So what exactly does recall mean in parliamentary terms? Let's find out. Section 110 of the Constitution provides that when the constituency of a particular representative, either a senator, a member of the House of Representatives, or a member of the State House of Assembly, whenever the constituents uh, in a signed petition uh, of not more than um, uh, not, more than, not, less than. Uh, not, not less than half of the registered voters okay petition INEC that they have lost confidence in their representatives okay INEC have to 
go conduct a referendum, once they are able to get a simple majority over half of the registered voters in that constituency, that member is certified to be to have been recalled. The recall is an instrument, is a constraint instrument in the hands of the electorates that they can recall their representative at any time if they find out that he is incompetent uh, and he's not representing their interest very well. It has not been uh, throughout uh, this thing uh, from uh, the, from 1999 to date. Uh, there has never been, there are attempts, but there has never been any single recall that has uh, succeeded because of its cumbersomeness and uh, its intricacies. Plans by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign the Naira continues to generate concerns, with some speaking for and others against. Curious about what the man on the street makes of it, you and your reps engage a cross-section of Nigerians in Abuja. Let's show you what we got. I think it's a welcome plan because the issue of this 500 and 1,000 Naira note has been bastardized. And I think with what they are coming up with is very easy because I don't think anybody will be able to, you know, contradict this money. To, it's not going to favor common man. Is he going to put food on top of our table? No. It's not strength nera. It only cause inflation to Nigeria. It will put the CBN redesign the, the currency because most some people, if not most, are ordering the money at home. If they keep it there, there is no money in circulation, and that enough can cause inflation. I'm saying it to strengthen the Naira. Um, value of a currency does not really come from the design you get. Um, it's actually uh, economic factors that determine that. It's now time for the committee segment, and this week we turn attention to the power sector. Deputy Chair of the House Committee on Power, Francis Waiva, tells us that electricity supply hasn't been too bad lately and can only get better. I believe the average Nigerian would have noticed improvements in the last few weeks in the power supply in the country. Um, anyway, that's relative, depending on where you live. Uh, but I know that in Abuja, in Lagos, in most parts of the country, there has been some um, improvement, though marginal, in some areas of it. Uh, and this is, as you can ascribe this to two, three things. Uh, the Siemens project have started but uh, the takeover of five discos, the Potako Disco, Bini Disco, a number of others, um, and change of management could also be a factor. Um, and then the improvement water supply for the 
Adam uh, supported the generation companies, you know, uh, until you get into the really, really dry time when there's, and so that has also contributed. And gas supply has not uh, had uh, serious issues lately for generation. So generation has had a good time and distribution is benefiting. So I think uh, we're making progress. We just hope that it's sustained particularly that the Siemens project will deliver. Uh, we are in the legislature, we worry that we're not carried along in the Siemens project, so we really don't have the fine details. But we know that um, a lot of distribution and uh, transmission aspects of the value chain are benefiting from it. In areas where there is um, security challenges, uh, one of the things that have been vandalized have been power infrastructure in different parts of the country, particularly in the Northeast uh, and other parts of the country. So when generation improves, for example, and distribution infrastructure has been tempered with by bandits and terrorists, then it has to be relative. That's why I use that language. So in places where infrastructure has not been that severely hit, then they will have a, a, an improved uh, a supply. That is on, uh, on, on that. The, the problems really have been that of uh, distribution. Uh, there has not been significant uh, investments in distribution infrastructure. That has been our problem as a country since the privatization. Um, generation companies have reported uh, uh, vast improvements in uh, power generation. In fact, in our oversight visits to some Jenkos, we've seen the equipment. They have had to be forced to stop some turbines from, you know, generating because they can't offload to the national grid. So, uh, generation has really been up. The the challenge has been uh, distribution companies taking all the power that is generated. And you know that power is a wasting asset. So if you don't take it, it's waste. So uh, to that extent, uh, generation uh, has been good. Distribution has been the issue. Let's see how this uh, takeover will impact on the industry of the five uh, discos. Um, the, in the Lagos area, Keja and Eko seem to be doing very well. Um, let's see what happens. If this takeover helps, then it might as well happen in others. Who will advocate for that? Because as long as we get power supply, we are okay as Nigerians. As a committee, we queried the 239 billion because the power sector, particularly the ministry and its agencies, have access or control over only about 40 billion. And we brought it up as a serious issue that as lawmakers, it's our business to know what the other huge fraction is being used for or budgeted for. We want to see the fine details. Uh, 100 billion for what? 50 billion for what? It's our duty to appropriate, to, you know, um, um, approve uh, these uh, appropriations. But when you put a bulk figure and you don't say, yeah, so that day, if you were there at uh, the consideration of the budget, the minister was clear that what they sent to uh, finance, Minister of Finance, is not what came back. And when it came back, they saw this multilateral funding for, um, you know, most of the infrastructure in power are funded by debts, uh, uh, assets, you know, loan loans. But we in the legislature, we want to see this defined, to say this payment for this loan is going to this specific, that is what we have not seen, and that's what we're quarreling, quarreling, quarreling with at the budget uh, defense session with the minister. And he shaved, shaved the whole thing on the finance minister. So we're going to invite the finance minister, and uh, we'll ask her to give us defined details. Where are these monies going to? For the ministry, the 40 billion or so that is going to them, they were able to give us a breakdown. And we're able to query the ones we thought were not uh, appropriate or we didn't get good understanding. And they are going to come back with uh, 
more information so that we are sure that what we are appropriating is for the benefit of Nigerians. We do hope, like many Nigerians, that the Siemens Power Project comes good. And that's been you and your reps on the NTA. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Azul. Join us again.